Never thought I'd be ecstatic at having the walls painted in blood, but seeing as it's not mine, I'd say this calls for a celebration. This ought to square our debt. One hefty payment for a highly valued service rendered. But I admit, I do wonder why Nioka has brought you to me. Allow me to pose my question in another manner. Why, in the nebula, are you here? I told you I'm looking for a certain information broker. Ah, yes. Our little chat on the intercom. You're looking for the premier broker for all of Monarch. Which you knew was me, clearly. Phineas must have sent you. He's the only one insane enough to send someone to Monarch to rush me. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a-knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Oh, really? Are you fibbing? Be honest. Yeah, liar lair pent of fire. That. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. Why is that? I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Luckily, however, the Iconoclasts have now gone silent. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? I would. Then you've my impressed gratitude. Still, we need to get MSI off the airwaves. I will leave the means to that particular end under your discretion. So we kick them off? Exactly what I was thinking. They hurt us all with their pettiness. Which of course has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. Okay, so... Can't we cut them off from inside the station? No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extraplanetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Sanjar and MSI to stop transmitting on their end. Okay, I'll talk some sense into them. You do that, I'll be here waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it, plus a vat of patience. No Nokia needs a favor. Oh, great. I love doing pro bono work for friends. Aw, you called us friends. I'd normally entertain your self-aggrandizing delusions, but this time it's important. Important to you is not the same as important to me. Don't be Although fucking I do rude. I recognize that you may have earned some goodwill during your months laboring for me. Months? What the hell? She's your friend and she's in need. You're the only one who can help. Tug on my heartstrings, why don't you? Why not? Look, I'll do what I can, all right? Rebecca Hodges and Anders Wattsworth. They took a UDL contract back when Monarch went to ship, and I need to find them. I believe them to be on Terra too. If UDL hired two hunters back then, it would have been for creature clearing purposes round one of their spacer's choice outposts. These are the coordinates for the outpost under the last UDL contract. Now scram. And, uh, good luck. You're an info broker, what's that? Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. We'll call it an exchange for your help with the broadcast. Ask me what you will. Haram's attitude is annoying to me, like, he is so pompous. What can you tell me about Phineas? Not much, admittedly. You must know something about him. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. As far as what's between us, I mean. Outside of that, well... That's a raptodon of another color. I'm listening. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, 
The experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either. I want to ask you about something else. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. So, let's talk about the board. There are so many members. Do specify. Got any compromising information on the chairman? If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Okay. You understand? Uh -huh. What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal, but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. So the chairman demonizes Monarch rather than welcome it back into the fold. Exactly. But you didn't hear so much as a whisper of such from me. Okay, well, I want to ask you about something else. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. I'm curious about MSI and the Iconoclasts. They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? Well, I'm curious about Graham's, Brian's deep dark secrets. Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. Hmm, well, I could use some dirt on Sanjar Nandi. Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews. But he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. Damn. For nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, he's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. What do you mean? I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One once the other corporations had abandoned the planet. The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their homes in the night. I want to ask you about something else. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. Have you received any broadcasts from Earth? What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. Well, that's enough gossip for now. How low you seemingly regard my trade. I need to head out. Nioka, pick me up some stimu lotion and a bottle of purple berry wine when you're next in Stellar Bay. Very interesting details involving Graham and Sanjar. Honestly, though, the fact that Graham has night terrors shows that he is definitely, definitely guilty of being the one responsible for the attack. So, I can't wait to see what Zora would do. Since she knows that he is the one responsible for said attack. The hell is this? How'd you get up here? Through the caves? In what caves? Good answer. I wasn't looking forward to gut shotting you. See, the thing is, I'm with the corporate compliance crew. C3, if you will. We're mercs. And our current contract mandates that we annihilate any creatures or persons that emerge from the tunnel. Allow me to intervene. It's my job to mediate any conflicts of interest regarding C3 and third parties. All right. First things first. To make a decision in this dispute, I'm going to need to know what your role in your organization is. You can consider me the CEO of a company of one. A lean but efficient corporate structure. I'm impressed. Still, I gotta wonder. 
What are your intentions regarding Devil's Peak Station? That is why you've wandered out here, I presume. I need to speak with an information broker named Haram. Our guidelines allow us some leeway in identifying threats to our client. Your unorthodox profession makes me think we ought to remove you from the premises permanently. Don't do that. However, the terms of our contract specifically targets marauders, iconoclasts, MSI operatives, and anyone deemed to hobo-like in appearance. Excuse me? And? As you don't appear to fit any of those categories, I'm afraid I can't quite make a call on you. That's what I thought. Don't we as a standing policy provide an alternative to termination via financial restitution? Addy, our chief financial officer, could confirm. But I'm betting if you're willing to compensate us for our lost time and productivity due to this arbitration, you could pass. Wait, they want me. <laughs> no, 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 no. They want me to pay them for them wasting their time. Huh. Can't we all just get along for free? We're on the same side here. I guess we might could. There's something I like about you. Mm -hmm. Can't put my finger on it, but I feel Giggity. like I'd rather have you with us than against us. Thank you. You're so right. smart. Lance, unless you have a final point of contention to make, I'd say she's clear to go. No, nah, I'll sign the clearance form. Just, I must advise you to steer clear of Devil's Peak Station. It's teeming with marauders. Anything else you need? So, how the station end up overrun by marauders if you were hired to guard it? Trying to say we didn't do our job? Yeah. I'll have you know, our contract was to stop any marauders coming from the caves. Didn't say nothing about the ones taking the mountain path. We'll simply clear them out later, once we've got the go-ahead from Berthold. Who's Berthold, your boss? That's right. Berthold Fox is our boss man, founder, president, and CEO. Bertie went down into the caves on a hunt for marauders, give or take, six hours ago. He's a hands-on type. Likes to handle the tougher tasks himself. Although, he should have been back. Going on six hours now. I'd ask you to check the caves for him, but then we'd have to kill you when you crawled back out. You're so fucking stupid. So, you're going to kill Berthard when he returns from the caves, too? Space, no. The contract doesn't target C3s. How do we enforce it otherwise? I might cold-blooded, ain't she, Donald? Eh, well, makes me an honorary C3, and I'll look for him. Done. Use this. Signal's locked to Birdie's tracker. Should lead you right to him. Or his body. Whatever you find. Bring him back to us, okay? Exactly who was your client? The guy calls himself the information broker. Like he's starring one of those fancy broadcast productions the station puts out. My guess is, he brokers information. Don, I don't care if the guy's name is the architect himself so long as we get paid well and paid on time. Hmm. No dispute here. Okay, well, I'll be going now. And you've been pretty silent the whole time. Watch where you're stepping, stranger. You lose a leg. I gotta file the incident report. Oh, lordy, lordy. Don't want that to happen now. Alright, so I guess I actually walked into a nice little quest. So, let's go find this guy, shall we? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, lord have mercy. I'm hearing so many creatures, so many bugs. I'm getting PTSD flashbacks already. At this point, if this guy hasn't been back in six hours, he's as good as dead at this point. I feel like I would need this gun. I gotta admit though, this place is pretty nice. Pretty nice in here. Ew. Yeah, this bitch is good as dead. I see a nail. 
I love these two. These two are my best friends. What the fuck? Wait, wait, wait. This bitch is coming? Oh, shit. Okay. Oh! 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 Okay, hold on. Hold on! Where, where you at? Oh, lord. Okay, so... My companions already got rid of them. And I think I found the guy. Okay, hold on, let me just, you know, steal all this shit. Ooh. Oh man, this is gonna be a hard ass fight. Come on. Dead. Ooh! Woo! Oh my god. I had enough of these fucking creatures already. It's bad enough that I have to deal with more creatures from my Fallout 4 series. Like, I can't. Alright, so let me just pickpocket here and I'll give you all my attention now. That assist was a violation of corporate law if I ever saw one. Shut the fuck up. Since it was to my benefit and we're largely in lawless lands, I'll look the other way. C3 owes you one stranger. That's why I thought. You haven't seen Constance, have you? Ah, there's a torso. And better be your legs over yonder, never mind. I'm Bertold. What in the void are you thinking, creeping around a mana queen like that? At the time, I was thinking, please don't see me, oh la, I don't want to die, nah nah nah. Now I'm thinking it was stupid to come in here. C3 sent me to find you. Means they're still holding the post then, good. You might head on back. We can talk more there where it's safe. I'll be on my way, once I've gathered up Constance's parts. Ugh. Okay, let's skedaddle. Hey, Mana Queen Slayer! Glad you made it in one piece. After all, not everyone's so lucky. Meet my corporate compliance crew. Then check out our weapons locker inside. I reckon you'll find something you like. Then we call it even between us. Why are you guys guarding the station? We were hired to do so. Why else? You did get the memo that we're mercenaries. Our client's a bit unorthodox, sure. He calls himself the broker, and prefers the glow of a terminal to flesh and blood interaction. But I can't fault his work ethic. Our current gig's to stop, by means of lethal force, any creatures exiting the caverns, including but not limited to marauders, iconoclasts, and agents operating for the MSI. Kind of odd for a group of mercs to label themselves as a corporate entity. The corporate model is the oldest and most efficient, not to mention stable structure history has ever shown us. Plus, corporations got certain rights, not entailed to individuals. I lead the C3s. Addy covers our payroll and expenditures. Lance handles the human capital. And Donald is our charming public face. Our system works. We've racked up more confirmed kills than any other crew you can hire. Seems I've done your job for you. The station's clear. Wow. That was a bit presumptuous, don't you think? No. We were still debating as to whether we're contractually obligated to take out those marauders. And here, you've undercut us. We have an image to uphold. Our services are deservedly expensive. Now. I shall have to pay you so that future clients continue to recognize the value of our work. We'll just say you were a subcontractor. Yes, that'll do. We exercised our finest judgment in hiring you, you know? Hmm. I'm obliged. I'm here looking for the Bolt 52 for Sanjar and then 
Of course, nothing's ever easy in Outer Worlds without a nice little tussle of these disgusting creatures. Thank God I got these two badass teammates with me. And the sick ass weapons, too. Oh, what the hell? Nah, fam. We're not doing this. Ooh. Damn. So they're all dead? Yeah, they're all dead. Alright, so we can't go to the front. Oh, we can. Huh. Oh snap, some free stuff as always. Why not? Okay, so welcome to archives, records, and miscellaneous storage. Please select one of the menu options below. What's this? Sandra has a bad habit of paddling his reports with numbers and statistics. Not very good with slogans, jingles, and or taglines. Presentations tend to be dry and lacking in emotional appeal and funny references. Sanjar also displays a noted tendency to complete work rather than de delegating it, a trend unbecoming in upper management. All in all, Sanjar's work habits suggest a preoccupation with details and a starlin lack of vision. We cannot recommend him for further advancement. Needs improvement in the following areas. Interpersonal communication, brevity, delegation, idea generation. Huh. That is so funny. <gasps> Wait, Graham? Huh. Good thing my hack skills are pretty high. Graham's understanding of product messaging and branding is impressive, especially for a relatively low-level editor. Has a knack for memorable slogans and taglines. However, Graham has issues with brevity and shows consistent disregard for prescribed fonts and formats. Some of his work has been flagged for subversion undertones. And then Nandy. Hold on. Dora shows a real knack for brief but compelling presentations supported by catchy slogans. Her delegation skills are also top-notch. She can build a lengthy meeting around any topic and emerge with plenty of work assigned. Recommended for promotion. Alright. Everything is deleted per Sandra's request. And I could see why. He wanted all that information to be deleted because that basically gave away the secrets as to why he could not get a promotion. Am I okay? Let me jump. A. Hey. All right. So let me see where this bolt fifty-two is. Oh, look at them jumping. I just love getting the free stuff, honestly. Like, ooh, what's this? Yes! I love just taking shit, honestly. Look at all this money laying around. Sheesh! All right. Ooh, money? Yeah? Money! Oh, hello? Hello? I hear boots out there. Wait, can I ask her boots? No. Um... Hello, who's in there? Oh, thank the Eternal. I'm Huxley. Ah, uh, Hux, if you're lazy. I'm stuck. My friends and I were scavenging here, and a Mata Queen showed up, then wrapped it on. It was a void blasted mess. I ran in here, and... Um, now the door's locked. Little help? You got locked in? How? you get chased by raptodons you let me know the rationality of your decisions 
Well, I need to get in that room. Phew. Thanks, ladies. My buddy had a key, but I ain't heard him in a while. He locked me in here and took off. Probably got munched. So I'll look for a dead guy, I guess. Or a rat. Maybe it's in a rat belly. Gross. I think I found it. Oh, much obliged. Phew. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Mioka. Um, you mind getting me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. Um, no... You sure you're okay to travel? Oh, sure. I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy and... <laughs> hey, who is your identical, slightly blurry friend? Good luck. Thanks a lot, lady. And this must be the Bolt 52. Nice. Now that I got this... Sandra should be more convinced to not use the airwaves as much, so let's head on out. Be careful with your new friends in Amber Heights. They're not the most reliable types. Anyway, what can I do for you? I found the cartilage and deleted that data for you. Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. Hmm, well, you made it sound like you were sending me after a weapon. But that's exactly what this is. The world isn't changed with guns and speeches much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. And the bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 is one of the most formidable pieces of data entry in all of Halcyon. One false stroke can invalidate the entire document. It's true. One of the old execs gave herself a stroke trying to fill out the exemption section. That is not a flex. Um, the pen really is muddier. How charmingly quaint. But this is an electronic form. No ink need be wasted. It's an expression, sir? Well, it really shouldn't be. Electronic data is much easier to disseminate, but I digress. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Okay, well... So you do want to go against the board. Don't be ridiculous. What Mr. Nandi means is that we have some rather momentous information to deliver to the board. Or we will, with your help. Okay, I'm listening. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch. Illegally and in secret. Is it really illegal if the board's the one that makes the rules in the first place? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. Hmm, <laughs> Sandra, are you sly dog? You really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Okay. I know how to make people talk. Oh, I imagine you do. But as much as I love your can-do attitude and dangerous gravitas, Catherine handles all of our shipments. So it would be best if you could leave her in one piece. Is that how you people put it? Watch it with the you people. Of course. I didn't mean to make assumptions. Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. 
Okay, I'm on it. <laughs> I knew you were the right person for the job. I suppose I'll leave you to it. Okay, well, I need MSI to stop broadcasting. You're jamming Devil's Peak Station. You're just as rigid as the old executive committee. Why, we've hardly been able to get a clear message out until recently. When Graham finally shut up. It isn't easy keeping a town like Stellar Bay afloat, especially without the board's backing. We need that frequency to reach our trading partners. There must be another way for you to do business. Indeed. That's why it's imperative that MSI be reinstated onto the board. If we can find proof that one of the companies on the board is also active on Monarch, that'll give me all the leverage I need. Fine, but then you're stopping these broadcasts. You have my word. Okay, I've got to go. Thank you for watching this episode. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.